Welcome. In this episode, I'm going to be teaching you something called as vector decomposition. And then we'll be talking about the polar coordinates and the Cartesian coordinates of vectors. So let's begin. All right, what I'm going to do is start with an example, like always. Imagine I have a force vector which is directed downwards having a magnitude of 100 newtons. That means this length is 100 units. Okay? And suppose the force is acting on a particle over here. And again, let's suppose that this particle is only allowed to move in the horizontal direction. What do you think is going to happen? The force is not acting horizontally, but the particle is only allowed to move horizontally. What do you think will the particle do? Well, if you use your intuition, it is clear that the particle will still end up moving this way. But the question is why? The force was acting downwards, angled. Why did the particle move in this direction? And the answer is, every force, or for that matter, every vector has an effect in different, different directions. So what I'm trying to tell you over here is, although the force is acting at some angle, let's call that as theta, this force has some effect in this direction. And that effect is what we call as component. So the effect of this vector, effect along that direction, is called component. And our goal is to calculate what that component is. It's because it's that component of the force which accelerates that particle. Which means if you ask that particle, hey particle, how much force is acting on you? The particle won't say it's 100 newtons. We have to calculate what the component is. So let's see how to calculate that. Well, in general, if you have a force, so if you have a force of 100 units, and you want to calculate what its component is, what its effect is along these dotted lines at some angle theta, then what you need to do is you need to just drop a perpendicular over here. So drop a perpendicular. Then join this line from here all the way to here. This vector is now the component. And we can use trigonometry to calculate that. That's very easy. Look, if you take cos of theta, then you get adjacent side, which is nothing but our component. Our component is the adjacent side, by the way, divided by the hypotenuse, and the hypotenuse is 100. So the adjacent side just becomes 100 times cos theta. So if this angle, for example, was 60 degrees, then our adjacent component would be 100 cos 60, which is 1 by 2, that would be 50 newtons. So what I'm saying is if this theta was 60 degrees, then the force that our particle would experience would not be 100, but only one half of it, that is 50 newtons. So you ask that particle how much force you experience, it will say uh, 50 newtons. That's all I experience. Hmm, so we can ask ourselves, where did the rest of the force go? Well, this vector can have another component. Other component that which we are going to draw will be perpendicular component. So we're going to draw another component along a perpendicular axis. We're going to use the same principle, by the way. Drop a perpendicular and then join this line over here. Notice that this becomes the opposite side. So, if you use trigonometry again, you will find now the opposite side is 100 sine theta. That means in our example, this particle also experiences a force along this direction. It experiences a force downwards. And that force would be 100 times sine 60, which is root 3 by 2, which would, which would be 50 root 3 newtons. So this force, this force would be 50 root 3 newtons. 
whatever we did just now is called as vector decomposition decomposition is a concept where we take one vector and we divide it into two perpendicular parts it need not be two it can be divided into any number of perpendicular parts for example we live in a three dimensional world so i can actually divide into three perpendicular parts but for now let's stick to just two perpendicular parts where our vector is stuck to a plane okay so these two parts are called as the effects of these vectors all right so let's try to understand in general how to calculate effect of a vector so what i want you to remember is the following see if you have in general any vector let's call it as vector a which has some magnitude let's call that magnitude um let's just call it as magnitude as a and you want to evaluate what its component is along an angle theta then that component would always be the adjacent component and that would end up being a cos theta remember this so that we don't have to again consider the triangle and derive it of course you can do it it's pretty simple you can do it in your head but it will be easier to solve problems if you just remember this and if you want to calculate the component along the perpendicular side i call this as my perpendicular side then that would always be a sin theta this is of utmost importance when we talk about newton's laws and forces and lots of interesting stuff is going to come in the future we need vector decomposition one of the most interesting things and the most important things we need to do with vectors so let's take some examples to make sure that we have understood this concept perfectly imagine i have a vector a and let's say the magnitude of vector a is 50 units and suppose i want to calculate its component along say this particular axis which makes an angle of 60 degrees I also want to calculate its component along this axis. I'll call this as x axis and I'll call this as y axis. You can choose your x and y however you want. Well, what I will do is the component along x axis, I'm just going to call it as ax is going to be 50 times cos of 60. You understand why cos? Adjacent side always gets the cos. So ax becomes 50 times half. You get 25. Similarly a y becomes 50 times sin 60 because it's the perpendicular side and so it becomes 50 times root 3 by 2 which becomes 25 root 3 okay let's take another example suppose i have a vector this way vector b which has a magnitude of hmm let's see Let's call it as 40 units. And it has it makes a direction it makes an angle of let's say something like 57 degrees or 53 degrees. I like 53 degrees with this axis or wait wait, 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 wait. let's say it makes angle of 53 degrees with this axis. So I'm going to raise this for a while. Okay. So let me go back call this as 40 and let me call this as 53 degrees. Again I'm going to call this as y and this is my x direction. I want to know what is bx and what is by. Well, first thing I notice now is by is the adjacent component because you see angle is defined with respect to by. Therefore it becomes 40 times cos 53 degrees. Why 53 you may be wondering. Well, 53 is a famous number. Cos of 53, I always remember, it turns out to be 3 by 5. You know why? Because it's this triangle. We like this triangle. We have seen this triangle before, 3, 4, 5, and this is 90. Well, what you need to remember, I don't think it's that important to remember, maybe because it's not standard, but I, but I always like to remember this. These are nice numbers. This angle will always turn out to be hmm let's see that's 37 degrees and this angle turns out to be 53 degrees i just happen to remember that okay all right so how much would this angle how much would this vector be i mean this component be 
it's going to be 8 times 3 that's 24 units and how much would BX be well the X component would be 40 times sine of 53 degrees and sine 53 if you can look at the triangle you can see it is 4 it's the opposite side divided by 5 that's 32 therefore okay let's use yellow therefore if we were to decompose it and show it over here it would look somewhat oops it would look somewhat like this where you would have by this would be 24 and this one this component would be 32 now there's one thing to notice notice here which one gets a bigger component well look this angle is 53 degrees which makes this angle 90 minus 53 that is what 37 degrees notice when the angle is small the component is bigger that makes sense if the angle is small so for example if this is my preferred direction and here is my force vector the gray pen is my force then its component along this direction would increase as this vector is more and more inclined towards that direction notice that when the vector gets completely inclined the, the component becomes maximum entire force acts in that direction so smaller the angle with that particular axis or direction, bigger will be the effect. In contrast, what do you think would happen if the angle increased and the angle became 90 degrees? Just imagine this. What do you think is the effect of this vector along this perpendicular direction? I think you can see it. There is no effect at all. This force is not going to have any effect in this direction it may not be force it could be any vector it could be acceleration it could be velocity so remember one very important thing the most important thing is this a vector does not have any component along a perpendicular direction this is very very important later on we're going to be solving problems i think we will solve problems in this this particular series itself we're going to solve problems in two dimensions and three dimensions and forces that time we will see this concept that vectors do not have any component in the perpendicular direction no effect in the perpendicular direction is going to be of super super importance to us it's going to simplify our problems so much and it's gonna make it easy to solve it all right okay so that's it for this episode i hope you have understood what components are next time we will talk about unit vectors polar coordinates and cartesian coordinates see you next time